uh, hey, welcome to my channel. 추석은 내가 가장 좋아하는 명절이다. Der Dreißigjährige Krieg war ein verheerender Konflikt, der Europa stark geprägt hat. This is the beginning of the history. If you want to hear more, please continue. In this video, we are going to be looking at Bark, which is a transformer-based text-to-audio model generated by Sono AI. And I'll also show you a trick with the help of which you can clone any voice using Bark. Before that, I want to show you why Bark is special compared to other open source text-to-speech systems. The quality of generated audio is pretty great, uh, but it also has support for multiple languages. So most of the open source systems are limited to English. Now, the second feature I really like is its ability to generate non-speech sounds. So for example, you can add laughs or add music or have uh, emphasis on certain words. So these are different options that you can use. Uh, so this makes the generated speech or audio a lot more natural. Another great option is that you can actually run this both on GPUs as well as on CPUs. Now, one limitation is that the generated audios are going to be around 13 or 14 seconds, but there are ways around it. You can generate a much um, longer audios if you use a couple of techniques. So before showing you how to set this up locally, let's listen to a few audio samples. So here is the first one. Notice that there is this uh, special token laughs. So that will add a laugh to him in the audio. So let's listen to the audio. Hello, my name is Suno and, uh, and I like pizza. <laughs> but I also have other interests such as playing tic-tac-toe, um, as you can uh, hear, the audio quality is pretty great and it sounds really natural. So we will look at some of these options on how to add or modify your generated audios. Now, as I said, there is support for uh, foreign languages as well. So for example, uh, this one is a Korean prompt and let's listen to it. 추석은 내가 가장 좋아하는 명절이다. 나는 며칠 동안 개식을 취하고 Another great feature is that you can mix and match languages. So for example, if you see here, the first part of the prompt is German, and then the second part is English. So in this case, uh, it will generate an audio uh, from a German-speaking person, and the English uh, text is going to be in the German accent. So let's listen to the outcome. Der Dreißigjährige Krieg war ein verheerender Konflikt, der Europa stark geprägt hat. This is the beginning of the history. If you want to hear more, please continue. Okay, this, this is pretty great. Uh, I really like the uh, output. So let's uh, set this up locally and let me show you how you can run this on your own machine. So let me quickly walk you through the installation process. I'm going to be using Visual Code Studio for this purpose. So first and foremost, you want to create a new virtual environment using Conda. So I'm going to use Conda create, then dash n. You can call the virtual environment whatever you want, but I'm going to call it Bark, and then the Python version you want to use. So I like to use Python 3.10.0. Now, if you hit enter, uh, in my case, it's telling me that the virtual environment by this name already exists but you can go ahead and actually uh, do the installation. So I'm going to simply say no, because I don't want to recreate this. Now, once you create your virtual environment, you need to activate it. So I'm going to use Conda, activate, and the name of the virtual environment. So that is Bark in this case. And now you can see that we are within the virtual environment that I just created. Next, we need to install two different packages. So first we will need to install the Bark package. So you can use this command, which will directly install Bark package from. Now the next package we need to install is the transformer package. So for that, we can copy this. So simply copy this link and go back to Visual Code Studio. So we will need to repeat exactly the same process. So I'm going to paste this here, click enter and then it will install a transformers package for you so the installation is done 
Now, the great thing about Bark is that you can run this uh, both on a GPU as well as on a CPU. Okay, so I put together this quick code. This is based on the code provided by Sono. Okay, so the transformer library from Hugging Face has already integrated the Bark model uh, within the transformers package. So this is pretty neat. Uh, we are importing auto, auto processor in the Bark model from the transformers package. Then in order to store um, the generated audio to the disk, we are using the side by fact package. Next, we are simply loading uh, the model as well as the processor uh, from pre-trained uh, Sono Bark model. Now, if you're curious where this is coming from, this is basically uh, a repo on Hugging Face. Now you can uh, use a smaller model if you want. So uh, especially if you're running this on uh, CPU, you probably want to use the Bark small model. Next, we are defining the voice preset. So these are different voices that are available within the Bark package. Now in order to see what options are available, we can go to these voice presets and if you click on this link, this will take you to another page where ha it has information about different speakers available. Now, if you notice for English, for example, mostly there are male voices. I think I'm using this uh, English speaker six, right? Then there are uh, preset or uh, preset voices available for other languages. For example, this is Chinese, French, German, and so on and so forth. So simply select the voice that you want to use. After that, we are defining our prompt. So in this case, my prompt is, hey, welcome to my channel. And then uh, we're using the voice preset. So the selected voice, we give this to the model to generate the audio, convert it into uh, an audio array. Uh, in this specific case, I'm running this on a, a CPU, but you can run this on a GPU if you have a GPU available, right? And now the model already has information regarding the sampling rate or the sampling frequency. So I'm going to use that right, and generating a WAV file with that specific sampling frequency. And we are writing the audio array that we just generated into the disk. Now, in order to run this, we are going to use Python and then uh, the name of the file. So I'm calling this audio, audio generation, right? And after that, you simply need to run the file. Depending on your hardware, it will take a few seconds to generate the audio for you. Okay, so here is my audio. So let me play this. Uh, hey, welcome to my channel. This sounds pretty natural. I, I really like it. This is pretty amazing. And the great thing is you can actually run this on your local machine, which is pretty amazing. Okay, uh, let's play around with some of the options. So here I added laughs, and this will hopefully add laughs at the end. And I'm just uh, saving this with a different file name. So all I need to do is just run this file again. And here's the output. Uh, hey, welcome to my channel. <laughs> this is pretty awesome, uh, especially the, the quality is pretty great. I really like it. So next, I want to show you how to generate longer audios than uh, 13 or 14 seconds, as well as how to clone your or somebody else's voice using Bard. But before that, let's look at a couple of things that uh, is going to be of interest. So first is, uh, what is the v VRAM requirement if you're running this on a GPU? Uh, so according to the authors, the full version of Bark requires around 12 gigabytes of uh, memory to hold everything on the GPU at the same time, right? But if you have a smaller card, you can work with two gigabytes of RAM as well, a VRAM actually, uh, by using the smaller model. Next, uh, it can generate a variety of different uh, qualities, right? And that's what they are trying to address here. So here's a question. My generated audio sounds like a 1980s phone call. What's happening? So according to them, uh, Bark is generating the audio from scratch, not always generate high fidelity studio quality speech. Rather, the output could be anything from perfect speech from to multiple people are giving at a baseball game recorded with a bad microphone, right? So it's really hard to control the output quality, but from what I have seen, the output quality is actually pretty decent uh, compared to other open source text-to-speech systems. So here is a very simple approach on how to uh, generate audios for very long uh, text segments, right? 
So if you see, uh, we have a text, and then uh, this text is converted into uh, single sentences using the NLTK uh, package. NLTK, if you are not aware, um, it's a Python package for natural language processing. So the idea is going to be very simple. Take your long text and then convert it into individual sentences. Then use uh, the Bark model to generate audios for each of the individual sentences. Put them together, right? That's how you get a much larger audio. And then you can write that audio into um, a, a WAV file, right? There are some other advanced techniques on how to generate longer audios. Uh, you can have a look at this. I'll put a link in the description of the video. Okay, next I want to show you how you can use Bark to clone voices. Now this functionality is not directly available within Bark. However, there are other packages which actually implements this using Bark. So I'm going to show you that. The process is a little involved but I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step, step process. So just to give you an idea of what we are trying to achieve, here is a small audio segment from one of my videos. In this video, we're going to be looking at a new AI coding assistant called Ader. It's a new AI assistant that can create a complete code base for you. Okay, so the idea is going to be uh, to provide this 20-second uh, uh, audio segment and then try to uh, recreate or clone this voice. Uh, so for this, we are going to be needing another package. For voice cloning, we're going to be using a package from Kokui AI. Uh, now they added support for the Bark package, so this is pretty neat. Now the installation process or the setup process is a little bit involved, but I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process. The Kokoi AI package is actually a pretty advanced text-to-speech uh, system by itself. Now, in order to uh, run this, so let's look at the documentation. First, we need to install uh, this package. So you can either use uh, pip to install uh, this text-to-speech system, or you can directly uh, do it through um, GitHub. Right. So let's do the first option. Okay, so we go back to Visual Code Studio and I'm, I'm going to paste that command. So this will basically install uh, the Kukui text-to-speech system on our computer. Okay, so the installation is complete. Next, we need to go and clone uh, the Bark repo on Hugging Face. So for that, you actually need to go and download all these files and put them in a folder called Bark. Right. And the way you download these files is you simply click on this down arrow. Uh, so this is going to be a process that will take some time. But you need to download all these files. Or you can simply clone this repo if you have the GitHub credentials. Now, if you check here, what I have done is I actually uh, cloned that repo in here. So you see all the files that are available within the um, Hugging Face repo of Bark. So you need to have a similar setup on your computer. Next, you need to create another folder called Bark Voices. And within that, create another uh, folder for specific speakers. So um, in this case, I'm simply calling it a speaker, but it can be anything you want and put a single audio file. So the audio file that I uh, showed you before, I just put that in there. Okay, so once you do all those steps, here is going to be a very simple script that we need to run. This is basically downloading or importing the Bark configuration from the TTS package that we just downloaded, right? Then importing uh, the Bark model. Again, we are using SciPy for uh, writing the generated audio. Next, we are setting up the model configurations and then loading the checkpoints. The checkpoints are actually available within the Bark uh, repo that we cloned or downloaded. Right, so you need to make sure that uh, you clone that repo. After that, uh, here's our text. So this is the text that I want uh, the um, model to actually narrate. And then we pass this text configurations. The speaker ID. Speaker ID is basically the folder name. So within the Bark Voices uh, folder, you need to have a separate 
uh, folder for each speaker. So in this case, I'm simply calling it speaker, but you want you can name it whatever you want. And then we div we are uh, telling it where uh, to find that specific speaker. So that's going to be in the Mark Voices folder. After that, we are setting up the sampling rate, right? And uh, writing the generated audio into a WAV file on the disk, right? And if you notice here, uh, this will give us a dictionary and we are just extracting the um, data belonging to the WAV key. Now, in order to run this, you will need to uh, use Python. So Python and then Weiss clone, right? If you run this, this will generate an audio file. Okay, so here are the results. I will hope you found this video useful. Subscribe to my channel for more content. Okay, this was not what I was expecting. It definitely does not sound like me. So I think you probably need to provide a better quality input audio. Okay, so what I did was in the second test, I actually took this audio. In this video, I'll show you how to generate speech from your text. All right, so from the same speaker, and I uh, tried to train a model based on this to clone it, and the results looks um, to be pretty good. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. Right. So I think it has something to do with the uh, quality of your input audio. So I might have to play around with a bit more, but that's uh, how you can clone uh, any voice you want. But keep in mind that since uh, Bark is a probabilistic model, so the results may vary a little bit. I hope you found this video useful. If you would like to support the work I'm doing, check out my Patreon. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.